Pikes Peak is so special. You only get one chance in one year, unlike other motorsports. And I think that makes people want to come back. I've competed last two years. First year, we were never to finish, but we came back 2020 and we won the class. And this year, we are pushing the EV class for our new challenge. Every year, we learn something about the car we bring. We learn something about ourselves, about what we're capable of. So uh, every year brings out a new challenge, and that's why we love it. This event's a little bit different for us. We've always supported Evasive Motorsports as a partner, but this year is a little bit different with the Tesla Model 3 and our goal is to be a leader in our industry uh, in the EV market. So in the past, we've been building gas-powered cars, and this is the first year we're building EVs. There are challenges that we've never faced before. The motor is gonna put out whatever factory allows it to put out. But the challenge comes in managing the battery's temperature, communicating with Dai on how he should drive the mountain. And it's challenging because a racer is always gonna wanna go 100% off the line. So when we tell him, hey, you might need to chill out for a little bit, save some power for later down in the middle section or upper section, that is something hard for us to perfect. The automotive aftermarket's kind of been slow to embrace change, and we want to be an agent of change and be a pioneer in that area. So if we back it financially and say, hey, you have an outlet if you make the parts, so we're going to support it, we're going to buy it, but we need people to make parts and we want to be a part of it. Driving EV is a little different. Um, no sound and no shifting. So it's kind of hard to get the timing right because a lot of people using the, the sound as a, kind of like an indicate. You got instant torque. So when you're exiting the turn, you can step on it. It just goes so quick, but it kind of tapers down. You kind of have to manage the power. So that's still something we are trying to figure out what the best strategy will be for the race day. I might have to drive a little differently, try to save the power in the bottom section and save more power towards the end. And then, you know, overall we can go the fastest time. It makes about 450 horsepower with uh, 460 pounds of torque. We have done everything we can to the car besides increasing powers. One of the main thing is the arrow on the car. You'll notice that it has a huge front splitter, rear diffuser, rear wing, hood vents, and everything is done for downforce or cooling purposes. Suspension-wise, we have KW suspension, their motorsport three ways, and it's custom valve for the hill climb. The wheels are Titan 7, the TP5 18 by 11s. You'll notice we added a carbon aero disc in the rear. That's a small touch to help generate a little bit more downforce in the back. The brakes are Brembo, the fronts are Pista, big brake kit, it's a brand new kit, and the rear is fully customized. Everything has been replaced with carbon or Lexan. The roof, the rear windshield, the rear doors, the rear trunk are all just carbon skin to try to keep the weight to a minimum. And hopefully that will all tie together and make the car go fast. So our goal is always to make sure that Dai makes it to the summit in one piece because at uh, end of the day, this is probably one of the most dangerous race anybody can participate in. As long as he makes it up in one piece, uh, we'll be pleased with whatever result that comes from it. I'm still learning a lot. Every time, there's so much to learn, especially the course. Even I try my best, my team try the hardest. You know, sometimes you can't get it. It's very challenging, and this is our first challenge with the EV. But we are really excited, and uh, we'll do our best. I think Mountain will decide what we can do. So the car took off, something didn't look right. Uh, definitely looked like there was an issue that's causing the car to go in lip mode. So it took off really slow. There's not much we can do at this point. Hopefully the issue will sort itself out. EV is the future of the automotive. We're in the last days of the internal combustion engine. 30 years from now, kids from now, will just be driving EVs. That's what the wave of the future is. And for the automotive aftermarket, this is like 1984 when carburetors were on the way out and we're going to fuel injection and embrace it in a way that uh, makes it wholesome for everybody. A lot of people in our industry haven't been to this event. They don't know what this event's about. 
and Evasive Motorsports took the bull by the horns many years ago and decided to come up the mountain and we support their pioneering spirit and the ability to go places that people aren't willing to go to. I really don't know what happened at the start, but as soon as I step on the gas, there's no power. So I realized like, oh, it's something wrong. For the split second, I thought about, oh, maybe I can stop and then have mechanic look at it. Maybe that's gonna make me disqualify. So I just push, push the gas again and just keep it going and hoping to get the power back at some point. The power output putting on was like 60 kilowatt or something, which usually the car supposed to do like over 350. But I wanted to finish, I wanted to get to the top. By racing at EV here at Pikes Peak, we learned a lot about the car, a lot of the limitations of what EVs can and cannot do. Um, I think by knowing what the EVs cannot do, we can try to improve on that. And uh, hopefully, if we do come back next year with another EV, we can address all these issues beforehand. Today, we didn't do well, but the flip side, we have some work to finish, so we definitely need to come back next year.